Now, uh, shifting gears here, Mitchell, you have been pretty busy. You're always really busy. You do a lot of stuff. Uh, most recently, you did some really cool preview coverage, some interview stuff with the folks at FromSoft about Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon, which is huge, massive, exciting. Um, what's, what's your read on this? What's your takeaway? I think this game is going to be really, really good. Um, you know, I, I, I'm coming into this as someone who didn't really engage a lot with the Armored Core games, um, you know, as a, as a teenager, because it's, it's been that long since, uh, you know, the, the series was really a prominent, you know, series in the, in the game industry. But uh, I'm really excited for this game. It, it, it kind of ties together that fantasy of of being a you know a mech pilot and you know fighting other mechs but also incorporates the customization element that also comes with that that kind of territory so you know one of the things that they show in the the trailer is that you can customize virtually every part of your mech you can write down from like the legs you can swap out your bipedal legs you can get uh quadruped legs and let that let you hover you can get tank treads that let you get kind of power slide through enemies um and it's a mission based structure so you're kind of going to have to tailor your your loadout to what the mission is kind of asking for um and it just it seems really exciting there's a good mix of both range and melee combat um so yeah i i, I think i think this gun this game's gonna be really special and i think from software has learned a lot since they they last touched the series over the course of making you know the entire soul series and they're gonna take those lessons and really inform the development of this one do you think do you think it's gonna be do you think it's going to land with with Soulsborne fans? I mean, I think a lot of them are kind of at this point like will religiously follow from soft into a fire, but in this case it's like it is a it is a different experience. It is I mean, it's a good question. The, it's the genre is very different, you know. This is this is not a a you know dark RPG with like, you know, intense difficulty at every turn. Um, I do think that the armor game armor core games do have a, a reputation for being very complex and, you know, somewhat difficult, but not to the same extent as, as the soul series. What I do think souls fans will appreciate is the fact that, you know, the boss battles are very much in the same vein of like, you know, you're, you're meant to play them multiple times. You're not expected to, to beat them on your first try. You're expected to learn their, learn their attack patterns, find something that works and, you know, exploit weaknesses, which is, you know, one of the, I think the core appeals of, of the soul series. It's the fact that, you know, you work hard for victory and you get properly rewarded. The thing I saw people sort of talking about in on Reddit or wherever was the, the key thing from, the Soulsborne series that might, that kind of carries over to this, aside from big boss fights and, you know, be having to get good or whatever, is like people who like to craft, who cra craft builds for Souls mm -hmm. games. Right. Like people who are really mm -hmm. into like finding that perfect balance of stats and gear and getting it all lined up to find something that really feels good to play. And in this case, you're just, you're tinkering with a mech. You're like, you're buying mech parts. Yeah. 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 I mean, from what I understand, I don't know how you're getting the mech parts. I, I assume it is, you know, you are choosing what you want and you're you're purchasing purchasing craigslist. those with with yeah craigslist yes. <laughs> face facebook market marketplace <laughs> um i i assume you're you're you know you're spending money and you're, you're you're purchasing the the things that you want to upgrade your mech with but you know i'm i didn't really get to to talk to them too much about how you're actually obtaining those mech parts and uh you know what the limits are on equipping them um so Fortunately, I think people who are are bigger fans of of the Armored Core series in the past will probably have a better idea of how that works. I'm just really hoping that I can get really weird with my mech designs. Um, like I told you guys in the past, like I finished my like my later stages of Elden Ring, I went through just dual wielding shields, and so like I just want to have like tank treads for arms in Armored Core Six. Yeah. And just kind of like run into people. Wheels for them. legs and legs for wheels. Yeah, shields for. Yeah, let me just let me just handstand through these robots. Yeah, just like one of like it's a battle bot game. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. yes. You want to optimize for something ridiculous? Exactly. Like, I wonder if I can get through the whole game of just being all tread. Exactly. Hard sci-fi <laughs> battle bots. That's a good yes. way of looking at it. Yeah, that's uh, awesome.
Now, the good news is we don't have to wait super long to find out what Armored Core 6 is like because it is coming out August 25th. There's plenty of other stuff coming out between now and then, but if you are particularly in the market for stuff involving giant robots, I figured we could round, round up, round up some of the various mech games out there, easily accessible on PlayStation and other platforms. Uh, just, just to stuff. To, if you need to be a big stomp and metal robot, just do some mech stuff. We got you covered. First things first, Mech Warrior Five Mercenaries. This one I feel like is very much. Uh, I've, I've, I've dabbled in this. Mech Warrior is such an old and kind of. Uh, you know storied series and this it very much is like this is this is not a super robot this is a walking tank like this mm -hmm. is a tank with legs uh this you know this does let you get kind of get your hands dirty with like tweaking various stats and you know attaching different gear and stuff and it's you know it it, it might not be the full-on sort of like arcadey like i think it's sort of closer to the kind of the sim side of things as far as uh piloting a completely fictional vehicle object whatever you want to call it uh, but no, it's it's a, it, that that one's a good time. On the more arcadey side of things, there is of course Titanfall Two, which Heck yeah. if, if you are coming off Jedi Survivor and looking forward to Armored Core, this seems like a thing you should be messing with if you have not messed with this. Even if you have messed with it, you should go play Titanfall Two again because it's one of the best single player FPS campaigns in ever made. I keep hearing that, and I always I'm like I should play. Josh, do you, do you go like play. To run it. Josh, on guys, Josh. Look, I, look, I know I'm supposed to play it. Okay, I, I'll play it at some point. You're not allowed to play Tears of the Kingdom until you finish Titanfall 2. Oh my god, you're gonna oh. have to like put me in prison. <laughs> no, Josh, it's like it's like a it's like a six hour campaign. It you, is. Can, you can do it in, okay. in a single it's day. It's so right, short. Right, right. <laughs> it's a good time, yeah. and it's just you just get in your you get your big your big buddy buddy Titan BT. BT yeah, good time. Yeah. Uh, an older mech-related series is, of course, the Lost Planet trilogy, which thankfully is available on the sort of streaming PS Plus classic side of things. All three of them. What is it like the, the first two are good and the third one kind of loses the thread? Yeah, the third one kind of, it went... So, like, the first one was very, like, survival action, and then the second was like, hey, we're going to add a little bit more action, take a little bit of the survival out, but it's still there. Third one was just kind of, like, full-on action, like, killing hordes like big and hordes. Big co-op focus in that one also, yes, right? Yes, yes. The third one yeah. was very co-op focused, which I thought was cool, but it definitely was, you know, they got away from a lot of the heat system. It wasn't as big of a thing as it was in the first one. I mean, it seems like there really was a, a stretch there where every major publisher, specifically Japanese publisher, had its, like, flagship uh, mech mech series. And, uh, you know, Capcom was putting out Lost Planet stuff, and I'd love, I'd love to see them go back to that. Uh, I remember being like really curious, kind of skeptically interested in Lost Planet 3. And then I think I demoed it and somebody pointed out that it was like the same kind of the same sort of dynamic as Master Blaster, where like you could be a little guy running around and then you could go back and get in your thing and you're like a bigger guy running around. And it's like that's kind of a cool setup right there. But I think it, it wound up coming out and it was just it, it got like, I don't know, sixes or whatever. I never, never messed with it. But now I now I can. If I, if I choose to, if there's not enough other stuff going on. Um, the Zone of the Enders, the second runner, I guess Zone of the Enders 2, a.k.a. the second runner, and then it's got Mars, but it's spelled with an upside-down A because you can't just name something normally. No. Mitchell, you no, no, I'm sure. I'm sure there's an. I'm sure there's an important story significance to the upside-down A. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's, uh, the, it's a, the shape of the rocket, like, landing. Sure. Lands. I'll, well, sure, why not? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I like a, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Zone of the Enders. I didn't play the the first one. The second one, I don't remember a lot about it other than the fact that the main character's name is Dingo. <laughs> 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 um, and I remember it having like really good fast paced mech combat. Um, the thing that really struck out like struck me was the fact that when you come in for a melee attack, the camera kind of swings around and does this really cool cinematic kind of a uh, combat camera um and you know this is this is a uh it's, it's a kojima game isn't it it's so I like produced it well either way there it has metal your solid vibes for sure and like I, my the, favorite the part direction. of the first game was that if you open the case and then look next to the disc there was a second disc that was the tanker level for metal gear solid 2 yeah which uh -huh. i still think is like maybe a top three metal gear solid game for me specifically that demo it's a good time but I, I do think the the big claim to fame for the first game was that it was the delivery method for the Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
Now, one thing that didn't grab me about Zone of the Enders is it's very, I feel like it's very like ethereal, like floaty space super robot. Like it's a lot of neon lasers and colorful stuff and fast pace. And I'm like, I like my, my robots to be a little bit tankier, you know, like a little bit more grounded. Uh, so Gundam Evolution walks a very weird line because that's kind of getting your Super Smash Brothers roster of famous mobile suits and making them fight each other a la Overwatch. It's basically like an Overwatch clone. Yeah. But people seem to be pretty into it, and I, I don't know if you've got a fondness for any particular, you know, Gundams or mobile suits, as it were. Uh, this is it's you know it's fun to mess around. I think this could also kind of scratch that uh, oh, that PVP itch because I know that uh, armor upside down A. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was, I was just going to say there was the upside down A. So that's that's the, maybe that's the connection. So that's the turn A Gundam, which was designed by Sid Mead, which is weird because he's also he designed the Bart tray. I just built one of these anyway. Um, the the cockpit is located in a very literal part of the robot. Uh, <laughs> and that is true also of Zone of the Enders. So maybe... That's why. Maybe the turn A is a crotch in the, the little... I don't know. <laughs> that little, maybe the upside down Mars is... Yeah. Interesting. Who knows? Anyway, Gundam Evolution is a free-to-play one. You can mess with that for free. At play. that It's explained in the... in the Anyway, 13 Sentinels Aegis Room. I don't know about this one. This was uh, Vanillaware? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mitchell, I think you've probably played more of this than I have. I've barely kind of touched the surface on this one. Um, but this was the one that had like, didn't have like time, different timelines and it was like very RPG ish as well. Correct. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I, I want to say it's kind of a mix between a visual novel and like a real time strategy game. Um, that's right. It, it's, it's different perspectives, different timelines, um, very winding complex story that uh you know kind of, kind of comes together and you know intertwines all the different characters and uh yeah i i didn't beat it i got probably like eight hours in or so and like literally right when the story started picking up uh one of these days i gotta go back to it but the art is unbelievable the the performances are really good uh really solid game all around definitely uh highly I got some kind of evangelion vibes from this or it's, yeah yeah just a little... i mean it's it's children and robots fighting <laughs> fighting for you know causes that are maybe questionable <laughs> you know it's they were born under a meteor shower it's their fault they have to file it pilot the <laughs> robot they're new types it's the only way to go about it uh shinji get in the robot get in the robot <laughs> you disappoint your father uh then there's the rift breaker this is a more recent one uh, this is interesting because it's like it's uh, action RPG, but with like base building mechanics. In yeah, there too. yeah, it's it's very kind of like they are billions, kind of where these creatures are constantly mm. attacking your base, and you're building up your base to build up defenses to survive, and then you upgrade your mech to survive longer, and it's just this whole like ongoing battle to uh, survive as long as you can and kill as many beasts and adventuring out in your mech that you can customize with different skills and weapons and abilities. And um, it, it's kind of a cool just blend of genres. Um, I think I saw the base building and my eyes glazed over and then I, I don't know, I want to give this a shot because the killing a lot of bugs seems, it seems antithetical to carefully engineering things, you know? Yes. Fighting hordes is not really the same as you know put putting doing careful busy work there doing all that stuff yeah they they the, the the hordes get very intense um i believe this one was is in the playstation catalog i'd have to double check but i know it was in there for a minute um but yeah definitely definitely an interesting one to check out if you haven't tried this one yet now finally i mentioned sort of all the publishers used to have their respective mech series uh there was front front mission was a big one, which has since kind of gone the wayside. And then there was a weird spinoff called Left Alive, which had character and mechanical designs by Yoji Shinkawa, who did Metal Gear. Uh, this was, I remember being like kind of curious about this, and I was like, why didn't I play it? And I pulled it up, and I think it's got like a thirty eight percent on Metacritic. Like it is <laughs> Left, <laughs> Left Alive was bad. Was it bad? Was it that? Bad? It is was, it like? It was is it very like bad. Playable yeah. bad? It was like it was very. It, you know how we say a game we said like Star Wars you said Star Wars makes you feel like a Jedi Knight yeah. this does not make you feel like a mech oh no like a good <laughs> mech pilot this makes you feel left alive <laughs> <laughs> makes you feel like you weren't left alive oh no oh, <laughs> um, man. It, yes. yeah I remember playing a very small amount of this one back in the day and it's just like 
Uh, okay, I think I'm gonna play something else now. This is just gonna, this is getting added to the abandoned list. Oh no, that's But bummer. if you've played everything else on the list, why not? Yeah, it's 90% <laughs> off Steam right now. So. There you go, sure, it's it cheap. Is, it's very cheap. Hey, what a deal. And there's one I totally forgot, I should have added this sooner, Metal Wolf Chaos. Ooh. That is, yeah. which is actually a FromSoft game, so if you're looking for that Armored Core vibe, maybe a little bit more tongue in cheek, a little bit goofy over the top, you play as President Mike Wilson, Mitchell, have you played this one? I have not. What? I've, I know I know a lot about it, but I've not actually played it. Oh, dude, yeah, no, Devolver, uh, <laughs> Devolver re-released this. We did the, like a whole remaster of this, and it's just, you know, I love that we're all like, yes, FromSoft, the, they make serious, intense RPGs, but also <laughs> this, <laughs> which is completely wackadoo over the top. You're, yeah, you're the you're the president. It's, yeah. I've I've got time. I've got a couple other sm quick honorable mentions. Uh, Earth Defense Force, which allows you the later ones allow you to get into like kind of mech suits and stuff like that, and you're fighting just giant ants and Welcome spiders. You think they would have gone uh, to mech sooner, but they're like right? send the spacemen out. Like. Um, and then the other one is I played on my like original Oculus Quest. It's called Archangel, um, and it's a mech game, and you you can customize your mech, but it's kind of like the way I I. I it, it felt to me it was like kind of a blend of a mech game and Star Fox because it's very much on rails and you're going through levels shooting things. Um, but it was a cool little mech game and you got yeah. to choose different mechs and All customize right, well, and stuff like if that. We're throwing our VR stuff in there, 100 foot robot golf too. There you go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just does some golfing. It's a good time. I, I love mechs. I love big robots. They're so cool. I love them very much. Very excited for Armored Core. Yeah.